Psalm 44 is a lengthy psalm. Let's get cracking. The Jewish people sang praises to God after their great victories, but this psalm was sung after a humiliating defeat. Life has some defeats along the way, we must remember. It begins by, in verse 1, Our fathers have told us what you did in their days, in their days long ago. With your hand you drove out the nations and planted our fathers. You crushed the peoples and made our fathers flourish. It was not by their word that you won the land, nor did their arm bring them victory. It was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your face, for you loved them. You are my king and my God, who decrees victories for Jacob. Though we, uh, though through you we push back our enemies, through your name we trample our foes. I do not trust in my bow, my sword does not bring me victory. But you give us victory over our enemies. You put our adversaries to shame. In God we make our boast all day long and we will praise your name forever. Israel's history since the exodus from Egypt is a story of God rescuing people and enabling them to claim their inheritance of the promised land. And God's power gave them the victory. He smiled on his people. But in verse 9, but now you have rejected and humbled us. You no longer go out with our armies, but made us retreat before the enemy, and our adversaries have plundered us. You gave us up and devoured like uh, we were devoured like sheep and have scattered among the nations. You sold your people for a pittance, gaining nothing for their sale. You have made us a reproach to our neighbours, the scorn and derision from those around us. You have made us a byword among the nations. The people shake their head at us. My disgrace is before me all day long, and my face is covered with shame at the taunts of those who reproach and revile me because of the enemy who was bent on revenge. Why was the Lord allowing the idolatrous nations to win these victories? Well, for many years, the Lord had been with his people, leading them to victory, but now he seemed to have abandoned his people. It was a dark time for the people of God, and they could not understand what the Lord was doing. Well, verse 17 says, All this happened to us, though we had not forgotten you or been false in our covenant. Our hearts had not turned back, our feet had not strayed from your path, but you crushed us and made us a haunt for jackals and covered us over with deep darkness. If we had forgotten your name, O God, or spread out our hands to a foreign God, uh, would not God have discovered it, since he knows the secrets of the heart? Yet for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. Well, uh, they'd done the right thing, but still they found trouble. And whenever there was trouble, Israel was the first explanation. It usually was, uh, who has sinned? Somebody sinned. That was what happened uh, when Israel were defeated in A, in Joshua chapter 7. Uh, also the three-year famine when David was king and when David numbered the people. But as far as the, farmers, the psalmist knew, there was no sin to be confessed because the people were faithful to the Lord. They were faithful to God. They had not turned to idols for help. And Paul actually quoted verse 11 of this psalm in Romans chapter 8 as part of his magnificent argument that nothing can separate us from the love of God, not even a defeat uh, after a record of victories. Israel's defeat didn't mean that God loved them less. It meant that he was permitting this to happen so that he could carry out a purpose which was known only to him. Verse 23 says, Awake, O Lord! Why do you sleep? Rouse yourself. Do not reject us forever. Why do you hide your face and forget our misery and oppression? We are brought down to the dust. Our bodies cling to the ground. Rise up and help us. Redeem us because of your unfailing love. Do you ever think that things are going so badly and that God is not answering your prayers that you could pray this bit of prayer here? The psalmist came to the place where he knew he could trust God and even handle the defeats of life because ultimately God leads us to victory. And eternally that is true. That's the place that Job found himself in all his misery. 
Job came to the place of ultimate faith in God when he said, Though you slay me, yet I will trust you. In the hardships of life, let's be sure that we continue to trust God and look in hope to our eternal reward. Bye for now.